provide for or fight for equal pay for equal work in our respective work environments. According to a 2021 Department of Labor blog, a woman earns 82 cents for every dollar that a man earns. And this gap is even greater for women of color, even those with advanced degrees. Women have been fighting the wage gap for decades. Let's stop making assumptions. Stop assuming that mothers and caregivers don't want those high visibility projects. Instead, ask them. Don't make those career changing choices for them. Make work-life balance a priority. Stop rewarding and incentivizing burnout. We need to support, retain, and encourage women to grasp the opportunities for career development. We have to take the lead in promoting the awareness, like inviting mentors and coaches to share the experience and provide resources to help women make informed choice. Here in South Africa, we really need to broaden our outreach to young people in schools, people that might, young people that might not have heard about accounting and might not even know what a chartered management accountant is or a chartered accountant is. And I think that's what we need to do is we need to get out into the schools amongst the young people and we need to speak about the profession and make sure that they all have an equal opportunity to see if they could partake in this industry. As the custodian of information and data, in the business, we have a governance role to play by making sure that there's transparency around KPIs relating to gender equality and diversity. In year 2022, to ask for more at work. It could be a larger office, it could be more responsibilities, it could be a better rating, it could be a larger job responsibility, whatever that might be. But just at least try to one in year 2022. So speak and behave confidently and promote yourself. The accounting profession should identify women's financial inclusion areas as the key priority strategies and begin to develop specific women focused initiatives to address the challenges. That is including and encouraging uh, CPD programs that are gender focused and establish women desks slash platforms that will foster and facilitate development that is of a tailored nature and will give products to women. As leaders, we need to make recruitment decisions primarily based on skills-based assessments and have diversity targets that we want to maintain, similar to what we do for profit, cost, etc. I've seen a concerted effort to add more women to boards and decision-making committees, including to chair positions. I've seen a clear acknowledgement that adding women to boards advances diversity of thought and brings in different experiences for better decision-making. One amazing initiative that I've been involved in is the SEMA Women in Leadership Forum. So it's a group of women within the accounting profession and we meet, we network with each other, we empower each other. And I feel like I've collaborated with some amazing accomplished women and this is driving that visibility out there. In my company, I've seen how a board composition now has equal participation from female directors as well as male directors. And in fact, our chairman is a female uh, and a highly respected uh, women leader in the industry. The case for DEI has been thoroughly made, not only from an ethical perspective, but also as the cornerstone of successful, innovative and profitable businesses. We used to encourage our employees to come speak to us, work together to develop a, a tailored schedule that would fit their needs. And we would be willing to entertain all sorts of arrangements there. But that's not the same as the flexibility that comes from applying your own judgment. And the norm now is, of course, you can step away from your desk and take time to do the other things life demands. Uh, just work with your teammates, communicate well, honor your commitments. And that true trusting flexibility is a complete game changer.